Let's get this party started. I need a double cheeseburger and hold the lettuce. While we're at it, let's hold majority of the color wheel. Welcome everyone. Welcome to my art channel. It's artsy fartsy magic at your service. And we are going to be learning about limited color palettes on this beautiful hump day. Hello fellow artists, hello fellow beginner artists, that's me. I mean, I guess I'm not a beginner. I would say intermediate, but it doesn't matter. There are several benefits to limited color palettes. I'm just gonna name off around roughly eight of them. I don't know why I'm saying roughly, it's exactly eight benefits. Okay, starting. One, one, it improves your color mixing skills. Not only will it improve your skills at color matching, but it will actually transform your perception of color and what you see around you. Two, you'll have a greater balance throughout your painting. Three, it is easier to color harmonize. Four, less chance for over mixing. Five, it's a faster way to paint. Six, it forces you to think about tone and composition. Seven, having to utilize warm and cool colors achieves contrast rather than adding more color. And finally, eight, it is easier to pack and cheaper to buy. There's several different examples of limited color palettes. For this one that I'm doing, it is a tri-color palette, mustard yellow, crimson red, and indigo. I mix the blue and the green to make the indigo. It's kind of a muted version of the primary colors. I'll put up a picture of, of that here. So I'm going to be talking about different examples of color palettes later on, but I kind of just want to explain why I'm using three colors. Side note real quick, I decided to do Dorothy from the Golden Girls. And after looking at the picture, I realized that I don't think I made her nose skinny enough. I wanted to move her eye over after I did that. And I feel like her hair is kind of off, but it is what it is. I still think it's a good portrait. I still think it looks like a cute little Mima, and I'm happy with it, kind of, but it's okay. I didn't use the grid method. I didn't use the tracing or the projector method. I just went off of my eyesight and I'm proud of myself. Anyways, let's get to talking about why I'm using three colors. A three color palette helps with color harmony and neutralizing tones. As a new artist, you tend to learn to use complementary colors to neutralize mixtures. If you don't know what complementary colors are, those are the colors that are directly across from one another on the color wheel as shown above. The problem arises when too much of a complement is added. This is a typical problem for beginners and I struggle with this as well. With a three color palette, all of this is easily avoided by continually scraping together your quote unquote mud and keeping it available. You can neutralize the color simply by adding just a touch of it instead. This also lends color harmony to your painting because every color you put down has a bit of the overall color of the painting in it. I know that was a lot to process there, so I'm just gonna explain how I went through this process of putting each color down. Obviously, I like to show my mistakes, like you can see there. <laughs> I mean, that's the beautiful thing about watercolor, am I right? You can just soak it back up with the brush or get a paper towel. I must say the one thing I do love about Dorothy from the Golden Girls is basically how confident she is. I just love how she really doesn't give a fuck about really anyone or anything. I am sad that the actress for that character is gone, but her character will live on. Oh my God, it rhymes. Oh my God, I'm a freaking poet. So I decided to put the yellow color down for the skin and then add the red for the cheeks and the lips. And I really don't know if Dorothy has blue eyes, but I decided to go with it because I was feeling it. As far as the clothing goes, I was just trying to make everything balanced. So I put more of a heavier mustard color for the clothing along with the indigo. I put the red in highlights of Dorothy, but then I also, you'll see later on, me putting red mainly in the background to balance everything. I think it works very well together. I could probably work harder on this more and make it look better, but you can only do so much when you're painting a grandma. It's your grandmother. Elderly people is not my typical thing to draw because it's just not. <laughs> the 
The main things I really like to draw are young females, aliens, animals. I don't know why. Bunnies and snails. I like bunnies and snails. Is that weird? I don't know, but I like to draw it. One tip that I have learned is to paint things that you are not comfortable with and that you should probably practice, like elderly people for me, males is something I need to practice. I don't draw males as much as I should. And other animals, landscapes. I don't necessarily like landscapes, but I think it's good practice and I think I do a good job at them. Galaxies. Galaxies, I'm not sure if that's a landscape, but I fucking love painting galaxies. It's one of my faves. Anything that's honestly an imagination in your head and you can just make it up and nobody is going to question you because they don't even know what it actually looks like. I'm getting really distracted. You know what else I have stuck in my head? The theme song that I just put in in the beginning. It's raining at midnight in June. Yeah, so side note also, um, speaking of. <laughs> I did a 23andMe test and they do all sorts of things like physical traits, wellness. One of them, it, it just predicts traits about you. And one of the traits it predicted that I didn't have a good singing voice. And I was like, wow, that's actually really true. <laughs> this one is really random. Asparagus odor detection likely can smell. Can people not smell asparagus? Is that a thing? Like, do people not smell asparagus? What? Speaking of asparagus, I had some tonight. So y'all know my urine's gonna smell. <laughs> this tray is 100% accurate. It says more likely to prefer vanilla over chocolate ice cream. I honestly do love vanilla and I don't see anything wrong with that. Okay. I mean, vanilla ice cream is good. I like them mixed together, but if I'm going to go to McDonald's and order an ice cream cone, you bet your ass it's going to be vanilla. Unless it's like chocolate dipped, then that's a whole nother story. This thing even predicts your wake up time. It says around 8.35 AM and I'm not gonna lie, I actually do wake up around 8.30. How do they know all of this from me spitting in a tube? I don't understand. There was one more on here. Oh, what was it? What was it? Oh yeah, okay, here it is. Misophonia, which is less likely to hate chewing sounds. And I also agree with that. So I have a story. When I was in college, going through nursing school, my two best friends did not want to sit by me during our test because I would chew peppermint gum, chew it so loudly that it annoyed them that they didn't want to sit by me because they wanted to concentrate and they knew that if they sat by me, they would hear a and I was like, why do you guys hate me so much? And they're like, Kat, you literally chew so much gum. You're chomping your cheeks off and you don't even realize it. I honestly still have this problem to this day when I chew gum. I try not to chew it anymore because of this. Okay, let's get down to the facts because we are running out of time and I am running out of energy. Okay, so there are one, two, three main color palettes and I'm already showing you the first one, which is the primary triad. Mine is a little different, obviously, but most people use some sort of blue, red, and yellow and a white and a black. For almost every palette, you will need the addition of white and burnt umber or black to create values. The number two palette choice besides the primary triad is one warm and one cool pigment. Now there's some top three choices here if you ever wanna get into those. The first palette is burnt sienna, ultramarine and white. Palette number two, burnt umber, ultramarine and white. Palette number three. I don't know how to say this, so I'm gonna wing it. Viridian, green, alizarin, crimson, and white. So one warm and one cool pigment for those three. Okay, so the last third example of a limited color palette is the monochromatic one, which you can choose any single pigment and pair it with black or burnt umber to achieve a range of values. So here I am finishing the background. I originally thought I was going to just do the red color, but then I was like, you know what? We need to add some more value, okay? We need to add some more mustard yellow. And here's my Siggy. Hope you like it, Kat Kinway. It's 2022, bish. Oh, look at that tape. Oh, mm, she's got it, bam.
Thank you, ma'am. There is just something so satisfying about this. Don't ask me why, but we all know it's true. I know I got slightly distracted there, but I hope you guys liked my content. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next Wednesday. Thank you. Bye.